So your song is also Kanye. Yeah, yeah. Reminding me there when we signed up again, it's unmuted now. Thanks, Landon. Right. Business to consumer. It's quite simple. We see it every day. Why? Because we are consumers and we buy every day. Um, so us going to the shop, buying a t-shirt, uh, a new cell phone, bread and milk, whatever we need, that is us um, buying directly from the business. We can see it because all of us are consumers and it happens every day. So it's more visible. We, the process that is followed when businesses sell to businesses um, is, is a bit more complex. It's a longer, more extended process. Um, and therefore, um, it takes more time, usually also because the amount that is spent is a greater amount of money. So the risk of what you stand to lose is so much greater. That's why they take more time um, to, to perform this process. Um, and you have to rely a greater, um, or, or, or you have to rely a, much more on establishing a very strong relationship with, um, with your, between buyer and seller. Um, it is, I think often the case that your relationship between the buyer and the seller becomes a loyal um, customer where the, the other business client um, becomes a loyal customer is because such a lot of time has been spent initially in establishing a good relationship. Um, businesses have a lot of people involved in a decision making process. If Prestige now has to buy 50 more desks um, and desktops and keyboards and motherboards and chairs for a new classroom where 50 students need to be in or two 25 um, seater classrooms, they are not going to go to macro with a couple of trailers, buy the stuff, load it and come and install it here themselves. They are going to um, they are going to go into their files and they're going to see who they have, who've been supplying these items to them over a number of years. So they're going to go to the guys that have been servicing them um, already. Unless they've been very unhappy. Usually it's not the case. And that's why I say your business clients are very often more loyal because um, such a lot of time has initially been spent in the original phases in the initial phases to um, establish a, a very good relationship. Um, it also does result in more meetings to get to the um, point of sale. You're going to prepare a specific presentation. Let's say, for instance, let's keep this example that we've, um, uh, that we've started with. Um, and somebody at Prestige who needs those would now contact the particular supplier they will contact not just that supplier because if it's an extent of a certain amount then you need to get two additional tenders in because the directors here are going to be looking at the best deal um, and that's why it's important to establish that good relationship because the return business that you get if you um, if you have serviced that customer properly is immense the next time they're not even going to go through that process they're going to go straight to you because they know what they're going to get they know that you will match the other's price anyway um if it's if price is the only is the only issue sometimes it's a stock issue and then you have to change supplies but preferably businesses tend to not shuffle around um and and change suppliers regularly something really seriously has to go wrong in that relationship for it to happen it could be that the business goes out of business the supplier and therefore you have to use a different supplier. It could be that they are not manufacturing a specific item anymore because it was discontinued. It happens. I know a couple of years ago when I had to buy desks and chairs like this, um, everybody in the Western Cape was, was out of stock at that stage. So it wasn't a question of me not wanting to support my regular supplier. 
my regular supply couldn't get me stock in time. I had to um, courier stuff down from Durban because those guys could actually offer me what I, what I needed. So it's a question sometimes also of stock. Um, and even more so now in the times that we that we live in. But then once they've got those um, those three quotes in, for instance, there will be somebody in that finance office who will sit and look at the different options. Um, there will be discussion amongst the directors as to which one they prefer. They will give it to the financial guy to contact that supplier um, and the transaction will be processed and will be delivered by the supplier. So it's a lengthier process. There's more meetings and presentations that happen. It's a longer time that actually that it takes to reach that point of, of, of sale. And usually it's um, because of that complexity uh, or the complexity is usually because it's a very expensive transaction. Those are some of the major differences between um, businesses selling to businesses and businesses selling to, uh, to customers. Now, when businesses do business with other businesses, um, it means that usually there are three reasons why businesses do business with each other. Firstly, a business buys something from another business, could be when they're supplying raw materials, for instance, that they're going to use to manufacture something else. It could be that the business buys from another business because they need that item to be able to operate their business. The example I've just given you with Prestige. Prestige are not going to manufacture these tables and chairs themselves. They go to a supplier, they buy it, the supplier delivers it to them, and they are using it because they need the desks and chairs to be able to function as a college. The bakery on the corner doesn't have a vegetable garden um, at the back um, and they grow their own maize. No, they buy the products, the raw materials from a supplier because they need different ingredients and they buy it either from the same supplier or different suppliers depending on what the products are. And they mix that so it becomes the dough that they can use to bake the bread which they then sell to the customers or to other retailers. So they buy with the purpose of using that to manufacture something else. Sometimes, um, and this is where your, um, um, your retailers and your wholesalers come in, um, businesses buy products, take a lot as an example. Take a lot hasn't got all that. Uh, don't the stuff that you find on takealot.com? Do you think they they don't manufacture it themselves? They buy that. They store it in their storeroom. So if you go online and you order, they take it from the storeroom, they package it, and they come deliver it to you. So they buy those products from the different suppliers to sell to the customer. Okay, so those are the three main, um, the main purposes why businesses do business. Okay, to buy raw materials to make something else, to buy a product, to resell it to somebody else, to buy products that they can use or have to use to remain in business, to do what they do as a business. Classic example of stationery, for instance. Okay, we need that stationery. We, we have to, the printer needs the paper. Okay, so we can't function without that. Understanding the semantics, I think we have. We've already cleared that, I think, so far in this session, where the semantics refer to what the difference is specifically to uh, between B2C and B2B. Anybody still in doubt what, as to what B2C and B2B is at this point? I'm not Wakker, I'm not on the same page, on the same slide. Okay, good. Stop me at any point. From that particular um, slide, the most important thing for me reflects 
um, in that image at the bottom where it says, what business to business marketers want from sales? The interesting fact for me is the one right at the top left corner. 70% of salespeople were in sales to business markets. Want another meeting. They know that business is not going to happen after the first meeting. They want more meetings so they could be more accurate in establishing what the specific need of the customer is. It's again that reassurance that we can deliver on that specific need. It's part of the process of establishing a, a strong long-term relationship with your with your customer. And therefore they need another session. They don't want to rush it. They're in no rush to just make a sale. Your retail shops, totally different. They want to sell all the breaches on the shelves today because they'll get fresh ones tomorrow. So they want to get the products off the shelves. Buy, buy, buy customers, buy, buy, buy. Your business is slightly different. They want to make sure that this transaction results in a repurchase in the future and eventually that loyalty factor that the customer just says, you know what, I'm so happy. I'm not even going to consider anybody else. Do you guys have this in stock? Yes, we have in stock. Okay, we need 100 of those. Thank you very much. So you're up at, at that level. It, it, it happens, people. It happens. But it takes a lot. It's like, it's like Checkers currently has that little miniature gardens. You can buy the seed and whatever, every time for every other brand spin, you get two packets new. My stuff will die because I don't pay attention to it. Now that's exactly what happens when you don't pay attention to your customer. You have to every day follow that step. Every day, give it a little bit of fertilizer. Every day, give it a bit of water. So that is the major difference between businesses or salespeople doing business in a business market. That's why they're in a no rush. Yeah, you're going to make yourself. Why are you not in a rush? You don't have to sell a thousand items to make your budget. You have to have one good deal and then you make up and because the quantity that is spent by the buyer is just so much higher. And that's why it's fine to actually spend time and put time and effort into into the transaction or reaching that point of um, making a transaction. Differences about the business market very often is geographical. As you as you a grocery is a good scope of good pay of one of what I call. I mean, just. You go to the same shop every time, you go to different shops, you go to the shop as closest to where you are when you actually need it. Um, marketing and Of course, you don't have groceries. You have to say this, and this is the copy of the Yes, sir. Not the reason why we say it's, it's geographical is. Um, not all businesses operate in all the provinces in our country. You've got a pick and pay and a spa and the checkers in every province, almost every town in this country. At least one of them, the small rural towns, at least one of them. Um, because the town is too small to actually cater for two, basically offering the same service. You find your rural towns, it's either a spa or a pick and pay or a shop right or a, um, or a, or a checkers or a big day. You won't find two. Okay. Um, geographical location refers to the fact that um, they will do business. I wanted to do business with my supplier who was, um, who was located in the metropole because I know if I need five more desks, I can quickly find that person and I get it delivered. The fact that he didn't have stock 
and in the quantities that I needed, I had to resolve to a different province and a different supplier. Usually, businesses keep it local because if it, it definitely cost me more to get it from Durban here than it would have cost me if my supplier in Cape Town had in stock. So the, the distribution of that product to get it to you um, is going to incur additional cost if it's outside your geographical area. Okay. Road transport, freight, um, train, whatever transport you use, it's going to cost you. Relatively small numbers, yes. Usually, um, your your business market is 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 smaller. There's not um, there's not too many companies manufacturing and supplying the same product. The market is not big enough. How many? Usually a market starts off if there's a new specific need, like for instance, stationary way back. You grew up at CNA, or I grew up at CNA. That was the only, if you wanted stationary, that's it. There were nobody else. Now I've got um, Office National and you've got PNA and you've got, there's a lot. Initially, um, there's, not, there's not too many, but again, you won't find as many um, as you would find, for instance, in retail, where you've got so many options to choose from. Usually, a smaller number of, um, of suppliers, as well as a smaller number of buyers, because the quantities in which people buy are not that much. Okay, how many schools in South Africa? How many schools in South Africa? Close to 50,000. Okay, a business wants that, they want that contract. Um, how many universities in South Africa? I think about 20, 25. Okay, it's a different market. So see, in specific markets, there are definitely less businesses, smaller amount of businesses in, in particular industries. But, they're in the same industry of education, where schools usually have between 500 and 1,500 kids, either a small school or a medium school or a mega school or macro, whatever they call them. Um, universities in excess of 10,000, right? So there are definitely in certain um, industries, in all industries for that matter, there are smaller number of, of suppliers. Um, supplies and buyers, sorry. There's a large buying capacity. In other words, usually the transaction is a big transaction. Okay, businesses are not going to just buy one share. Maybe if I look at what's happening at Cricket South Africa, they should have just actually bought one at a time, or at least have some control. I'm not sure if you guys follow it because I mean I was employed there at one stage and that's why it's it, for me it's 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 interesting to follow how things have deteriorated because I can remember I think it was '92 or '93 the Australians uh, Alan Borders Australian cricket side were touring out here and I was the liaising officer for the the um, Western Cape leg here yeah, when they played Poland and the Test of Newlands um, the Proteus and then also that stage it wasn't the um, Cobras yet it was still Western Province. And um, there was something that I needed urgently because it just popped up. I mean, when we arrived, when they arrived and I collected them at the airport and booked them in at the vineyard in, in, in Newlands, um, they were playing a three-day game against Poland um, at the end of that week. And when they heard that, um, they all wanted to, they all wanted to move to Stellenbosch. I said, well, you know what you put into this place already but then i mean how do you um how do you say no to guys like steve war and mark war and um and uh, alan border and those guys i mean you just do what you need to do to keep the customer happy and when they got to Stellenbosch, um we convinced them initially to stay in cape town because um once that three-day game is over the the test and the one days would be in cape town 
and Western Proms in Cape Town, it makes sense. Then they just run the corner. They can actually jog there in the morning. And when I got to Stellenbosch, um, the first day almost rained out entirely. So you have to entertain them. These guys want to go play basketball at Stellenbosch University because in that they've got the big hall where the graduation is. They want to go play basketball. These guys want to go to a spa. So we took them to the spa there in, 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 in Ida's Valley. Those are extra costs that you didn't budget for. So there's a process that you go through. So I had to go follow that. And eventually it ends up with, he was head of cricket at that stage, Dr. Ali Bacha. And, and he says, you know what, it's fine, but you're not going to get the money immediately. It needs to go through a process of approval. That was how it was done and it was fine. And everybody did it because that was the protocol. Um, you just had to make a plan. I mean, negotiate with the supplier. <laughs> we'll, we'll pay, we're good. <laughs> we're definitely going to stay here. And, um, and, and they usually also see the benefit of, of, of having those guys around as celebrities. But um, nowadays, unfortunately, sadly, you hear of amounts of 500,000 rand spent on a one-page ad in a, in a Sunday newspaper um, that hasn't gone through the proper... The one guy who's actually had to sign it off didn't even know about it. Okay, so, yes, it is deteriorated. So I'm, I'm interested in these things happening because I know in business there's certain protocols and certain processes, especially if it's a, if it's a, it's a substantial amount. So, um, yes, definitely... Um, you will deal with um, with more professional buyers. Um, they have certain protocols in their businesses that they follow. They're not just going to say, oh, I like your face. And I mean, this was a good presentation. So, yeah, I think we're going to do business. No, he has to go through three, four other people and get them convinced as well. <coughs> um, and as I said, that's why I enjoy doing business with, with um, Americans and why I enjoyed while I was in America doing business with them. Because, you know, your presentation, you will know at the end of the presentation is with yes or no. If it's yes, follow me. We're going to go to the HR office and we're going to sign the contract. Deal done. If it's no, we shake hands and we move on. Nobody, and I move to the next guy and I do a presentation at a different business. That's how it's operated in here, unfortunately, or not just in South Africa, in many other countries. It's a process that they follow that... Yes, they still have a process to follow as well. Those guys are not going to give their thumbs up and say, cheers, can you start tomorrow kind of thing, or when can you deliver? It still has to go through a process, get approval, finance, and, 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 and. So it's not that the, they, they, they've got, a, they've short-circuited the whole process or collapsed the time frame. It's still the same process. The decision-making is just more concise. There's no, you know what, um, I have to discuss this with the other directors. What if this is important for you? Why weren't the other directors here for the presentation? Okay, so sometimes I think we have also, you can add unnecessary steps in the process and you can be over, um, you can overload the whole system as to who needs to give approval. But I also understand in business is very important because if something happens to somebody who's making a decision, um, they die or they get sick, the business cannot stand still. So there needs to be a process in place where somebody else can continue that. Um, where if something happens to me, if I die, um, then I won't be buying that stuff on pick and pay anymore. So it's a different scenario when, when in, in a business market. Um, and from a sales point of view, where we are approaching this, it's important to understand that, um, that, that process, because sometimes, especially, um, where salespeople, um, who were in, in retail and we were chasing sales all the time, now go to uh, the business market, they become impatient that nothing happens or that it happen, doesn't happen as quickly. There's a process to follow, unfortunately. The complex sometimes, uh, complex, the process sometimes and the products are sometimes very complex. I mean, um, especially where something needs to be custom made. You approach your supplier and said, listen, because of COVID, we've changed things. Our classroom, um, we have to, we can put more people in this classroom and st still um, have social distancing, but then we need a longer desk and only one, it's not on both sides, for instance. Um, so maybe if it was an extension, then two people can sit at this desk and we can still have one on that side of the aisle. Okay, then we can fit in more people here. But then we need a three seat, a, a, a desk that's spacious enough to see three people at the same distance apart. 
or two people in this case, um, the required distance apart. And your supplier would say, okay, right, we don't have in stock because, uh, but we know things are changing, so we'll make one for you. We'll make an extra dish for you. We'll make a, um, 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 a three-seater that's used by two people. So sometimes in businesses, the process takes much longer because of the complexity of the product itself. They have to quickly go make a product that's customized for you. In that process, they also have additional product that they can add now to the, um, to the um, range of products because they obviously are not just supplying Prestige Academy with this. Fluctuations and demands, um, and we'll finish with uh, fluctuations and demands and then just take a quick one minute breather. Um, so the guys online, Londu and, and Landon can then just reconnect again. But let's um, go to the three different forms of demand that we can find. We can have a derived um, demand. Usually, uh, and the best example I can think of is, is, is the, fertil the guys who are selling fertilizer to the farmers. And the farmers buying the fertilizer, putting it in the ground, and then growing all the grapes, and then eventually selling it. And the fertilizer seller and man or manufacturer is not in direct contact with the end user, the guy drinking the wine. Okay, so that's where we refer to as a derived demand. Part of the process, but it's not direct contact or very far um, separated from the end user. And the elastic demand is where regardless if there's up and down um, increases and decreases in prices it's not really going to affect the demand a great deal prices go down a lot all of a sudden the demand increases then it's not an elastic demand elastic demand is referred to where price increases or decreases does not really affect the specific um, um, demand a great deal okay a joint demand because when two or more products are used together to produce a, a single product. Often one manufacturer manufactures a component of the product or one item and somebody else manufactures the others. The two separately, not really popular, sold jointly, for instance. Um, something like a, a mouse for a, for a computer and a keyboard, for instance. Um, they almost sort of go hand in hand. Um, I just recently bought myself um, a wireless keyboard. I tell you what, that's fun. Uh, that's a great, that's sitting on a couch, big screen TV, you go all of a sudden, someone start doing work things. It's quite nice. I don't do that as, I prefer to stay in my study. <laughs>